a few weeks ago in Lego's Insider. Well, it was basically an Insider's week. I managed to pick up this Lego Ghost for £60. Pound. Now, it wasn't all Lego Insiders discounts. Lego Insiders reduced this in the UK and I think in most of Europe from £150 to only £100. And I say only £100, it is still quite a lot of money. But I had £40, well, slightly over £40 in Insiders points, which enabled me to get this down to only £60. In this box, there are 13 bags, which are organized a lot better than when I built the Force Awakens Millennium Falcon, which I don't want to think about how long ago that was. But once I stacked all of the bags on top of each other, the box looks a little too big. Now, we will be sizing the box up later on in the video because I'm pretty certain there is a reason why it is so much bigger than the bags. And you also get two sticker sheets, which at first glance look to be one for the Ghost and one for the Phantom 2, which is an amazing idea until you start building the Phantom 2 and you need to use three stickers from the larger sheet. So I think they just put most of the gray pieces on the same sticker sheet though there is then a white sticker on the larger sheet. Nonetheless, you are getting the Phantom 2 as well as the Ghost. And I'll show that off at the back because working through this instruction manual, I mean, you can see there are a load of pages. There are, in fact, over 255 pages if you are including the end. And I made sure to scan this QR code and get the 20 points, but feel free to give it a go anyway. And when you open the instructions, you can see that the first bag goes towards the Phantom and the other 12 are to build the Ghost. So let's get building and then take a look at the finished design. And here we have the finished built Ghost and Phantom 2. And I say Ghost and Phantom 2 because before we get to the minifigures, the Phantom 2 slots on the back. It's held in with a jumper plate and a little axle sticking out, but clips in really, really well. We've got the cockpit, which opens up. Not only can you store Jason inside, but you can also fit a full-sized minifigure and even get Lieutenant Beta inside with that larger alien head. Right at the back, there is a little section you can open to fit a pistol and binoculars that come with the set, which is really nice, as not all the minifigures actually have accessories. Taking a look at the minifigures as you build the set, you first start off with Lieutenant Beta and then you move on to building Chopper quite a while later. And then we've got Jason, followed by First Officer Hawkins and Hera Syndulla. This is every LEGO Star Wars fan's dream for a LEGO set. Not only do we get Hera, Chopper and Jason, which are found in the Ghost in the Ahsoka series, which is what this is taken from which is why the set doesn't come with Zeb Aurelius. But we also get Hawkins and Beta who showed up for probably a scene or two, but we're getting these lesser known characters in a Lego set. And honestly, the minifigures are perfect. First up, taking a look at, we'll go with Beta first because you get that Mon Calamari head, which is really, really nice. If you're not planning on picking up Jedi Bob Starfighter, you can add this to a plain Phase 2 shiny clone. And then you can use the torso and legs alongside the classic Zeb Aurelius minifigure, which I do have here in my possession. Take the hands and the head, whack it on Beta's torso and legs, and you have a Zeb Aurelius as seen in Mandalorian Season 3, which is a fine addition to this set. And as for Dawkins here, another great minifigure. I really like the detailing on the front and the back of all these torsos, but if you remove the hands, head and hair and replace the hands and the head with an older version of Luke and give this new minifigure Luke's old wig, it makes the perfect custom Crix Medine, who is a character from Return of the Jedi, shown up in quite a few other areas of Star Wars now. And you can try it out with the new Luke hairpiece, but I definitely think the old one looks a bit better. Moving on to Chopper, he is really, really awesome because he is actually my first droid with front and back printing. Now, we did review a TIE Fighter not too long ago, and you can swap out the head to make it look like Chopper is in some sort of Imperial disguise. 
which I do think looks hilarious. Chopper has a shorter torso and shorter legs to match up with his size in the show and actually scales perfectly with an in-universe R2-D2 in my 1 to 45 minifigure scale. If you're wondering if Hera and Chopper can fit in the Phantom 2, like we see in Ahsoka, wonder no more because Lego have left a stud exposed on the side of the Phantom that you can clip Chopper's head to. And whilst you can't store Chopper's torso in the Phantom, there is plenty of space in the Ghost for you to just store Chopper's body. Jason is another really cool minifigure. If you do want to go a step further for Jason and give him the green hair from the end of Rebels, you can take this elvish green hair that I purchased ages ago with this set in mind and give it to Jason just to keep up that Rebels accuracy. As for Hera, she is wearing a jacket which she doesn't wear in Rebels but I think the minifigure looks perfect for a Rebels display. So as you can see I now have Hera, Ezra, Jason, Zeb and I'm getting Zabine in next month's magazine. So all I'm missing now is a Caleb Doom or a Kanan Jarrus. A young Clone Wars Bad Batch style Caleb Doom might have made an even better minifigure than young Leia. Looking at this ship, you can remove the top fairly easily. As I've shown you, the Phantom 2 pops off and that can fly away. And then this whole roof bit here does unclip from the back. There is a two by six brick which attaches to two studs either side of the ship and that reveals most of the cockpit but you can go a step further and remove the whole front cockpit area as well to really open up this ship and get all your minifigures inside. You can see one minifigure in the cockpit at the front but of course Hera has to be piloting her own ship. There is plenty of space around the rest of the ghost to fit so many more minifigures including at the side two docking bays which do fully open and you can sneak a few minifigures in there. So I'll definitely have to see how many clones I can fit in this vessel because now I am really curious and the detailing around the ghost is definitely the best Lego have ever done to this day. Whilst we're taking a look at the interior there are two jumper plates in the middle, which I feel like I might have missed what that's meant to be for, unless that is where Chopper clips down, because it's much easier to get Chopper on and off two jumper plates than it is to try and stud him down and end up pulling up a few tiles. But you can see two stacks of round two by two bricks on the interior, and they go straight through to the feet on the underside of the model, which made the building experience for this so, so much easier because you knew exactly where you could press down. You can also see the airlocks a bit better from the inside and that orbesh on the warning sign on the floor does actually read airlock and you've got a yellow light above both of these sides. To the left of the left side, when you're looking at the ship, you have a sink and a little storage container, which, I personally think would have been the perfect space to store a Melu run. However, they seem to have added some sort of carrot inside instead. So let me know down in the comments if you know what that is a reference to. And on the right hand side, there are some controls for supposedly the airlocks, so though. I'm sure they also affect things elsewhere in the ship. What about the features on the outside? Well, I've already shown off the cockpits at the front. There is an extra one in that piece we removed to get into the inside. And Though it doesn't spin, it is in quite a nice position that you can add the turret at a few different angles to create some interesting space battle, which I personally think was really, really cool. Right down here at the front by the turret, you've also got two little weapons that wiggle a little bit. And as you just saw, send the flick fire missiles, which hopefully I don't hit the camera but it's a really fun feature until you have to find them after this video. And thankfully, if you do lose one, like I just have, you do get a spare one. The only problem I have is when the turret's angled to the right, it sets the left one off. And then when it's angled to the left, it sets the right one off. Earlier on, I did mention the sticker sheet and you're probably looking at it asking if all the stickers needed to be here. And honestly, no, they didn't. But the stickers not only look so good on this ship, but they also help with the integrity of the model. For instance, take these stickers on the side. You could definitely replace this with two or three tiles on the top, 
But this two by three is what's holding some of these plates together. So if you remove that, it's then gonna be a lot, lot weaker. And I did try to replicate some of the other details, especially on the Phantom 2 with actual Lego pieces. Not only does it make it bulkier, but there's also no real way to do it to the detail Lego have provided. So all the stickers here are really, really cool. And my favorite is definitely the design on the Phantom 2. I'm sure you're as curious as I am to know whether the Phantom 1 does actually fit on the back of the Ghost. And I'm afraid I do not have that set. And I might try to rebuild it, especially if I can try and part out that Cadent minifigure though. All the Rebels minifigures seem to be very, very expensive. Now they're in demand. Underneath where the Phantom is locked in, you can see the jumper plate and the little axle sticking out. We do have four really big engines and the part usage here is honestly pure genius. We've got some hot dogs on the droid arms on top. We've then got the two bars holding them down. And between the two engines at the bottom, we have a smaller tower of round bricks, which just fills up the gap in the middle so, so nicely. So if you couldn't tell, I'm a massive fan of this ghost ship. And this is going straight on my display next to my tire fighters. I would like to get all the other Ahsoka sets. I'm waiting for the Christmas sales. May 4th next year, and possibly even as early as Black Friday. So keep your eye out. This ghost is definitely worth the full price of 150. I am so lucky to be standing here, having paid nearly a third of that. That is all for today's review. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out all the videos on screen now, and may the bricks be with you always. Meow.